Okay, good evening, Bruce here. Uh, let's get started. So let me pull a little bit of news into the environment. Now I misplaced what I was going to pull over here for you guys. Basically, it was an article talking about how Bitcoin had dropped below 60,000 and it had 61 consecutive days of closing above 60,000. And I've talked before about that breaking down. So this is the news part that I want to share with you guys before I get into the actual why bit bitto trading. So sort of bigger picture. So let's take a look. Here's that article. And it just goes on to say Bitcoin 61 day streak, you know, critical threshold. They've got some charts here. Uh, so let me show you. So they're saying as long as we keep closing above even inner day going below 60,000. Well, yesterday we closed below, right? So here's an active in my Thinkorswim uh, chart. So you see the 61 level. This is uh, the trading window. Let's look. This is on one minute. If I go and I look at five days, you can see where we broke down, right? So here's 60,000. So we opened, went down. This dotted line is the end of the day. But as you know, Bitcoin trades 24 hours a day. So we're at the 57,000. So we'd really like to recapture that 60,000 level. Now, what they're really saying is the danger of the setup is that 52,000 is really the next major support. So one of two things are going to happen. You know, we're going to bounce up to 60, get rejected, and eventually work our way down to 52,000. So there may be some short-term pain, but nobody really knows exactly short-term where it's going. We can just give you guidelines and setups, right, uh, that that tell you what the probabilities are that it does this or does that. And, and that's generally about the best that, that someone can do. All right, so let's jump in to the tracking situation. So again, we track Bitto. Bitto mimics uh, Bitcoin. So that was down yesterday, 9.96. And we were down 1.35. But let me clarify a couple of things. I, I touched on this yesterday. Bitto is a pro shares uh, stock that uses commodity futures, right? So they buy Bitcoin futures in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the CME exchange. They hold May futures, which don't expire until three trading days, business days before the end of May, and they also own Junes, which same situation, those run to the end of June. So they trade and do that, and then they produce a dividend, okay? But we, being Ybit, buy the calls for Bitto. We don't buy physical Bitto. I personally own some Bitto on a few hundred shares, right? So I know all about the dividend. I know when it's declared. So yesterday was the ex-dividend day, right? You had to own it on Monday, and then you could sell it on Tuesday if you wanted to. And then the person buying it on Tuesday no longer got the dividend. So those of you familiar, it's the same way with any distribution or dividend stock. They automatically are scheduled to open minus that dividend. But what happens when Bitcoin futures are down and since Bitto's on it, so it even opened lower than the dollar sixty-eight. So that's by the way, the dollar sixty-eight is the dividend. So if you go in here and you type that in, right, that's gonna tell you I think um, a 2391, I think the math works out on that. 23, sorry, this is supposed to be 61. So I was right, just to 
quoted the round. So it's supposed to be 23.93. It opened down slightly below because the pre-market was trending down, right? So at a minimum, in the initial trade is declared at you know 23.93. But when pre-market drags it down, it'll stay down. Um, and in this case, it did. It traded down to 23.06, right, and closed. <clears throat> so when we look at a chart on that, let me change this to Bitto for you guys. And you see the gap, right, coming down here. And basically, this was the Fed, right? So this is when the Fed announcement, which... The dollar sold off and the market moved up and then they turned around and reversed in the close. So this is the, you know, 2306 kind of a close. Now we're up in the aftermarket, right, to 2359. But I did want to explain the dollar 68 move, okay, for you guys. Um, so that you don't go, well, that doesn't make any sense. How can that be down 10% and we're one? We can slightly go lower, but we're not going to have a one-tenth move, right? So there were no trades in YBIT. So let's go through what else is going on. And then I want to show you my chart in here and tell you what I see happening. Again, this is a future. So they sold another 100 shares. Um, or 100 contracts, I should say, of the June. They went from 26.77 the day before to 25.77. But I gotta say, Biddle really surprised me with $1.68 with this kind of trending down environment. They perform very well. $1.68 is a record, it's their highest uh, distribution. So I was extremely happy personally with that, right? given this environment. So that just goes to show that, you know, you can, but it's also, you know, 25, now it's a $23 stock. So if you buy it and it continues to perform like that, you can have, you know, take a dollar 68, multiply it 12 times, and you probably have a 75%, you know, return. Now, I expect Bitto to go a lot higher once Bitcoin finishes its consolidation phase. Okay, so let's go over and look. So nothing else on the April tab. If you scroll over here, um, the shares stayed the same, no, no share count. Now, when shares are bought is when they typically, if it's not a Friday where they roll out of the current weeklies into new weeklies, then they typically only buy when money flows in through shares, right? So the only thing that happened was we increased $668. Where's that from? Well, these treasuries, you know, they buy these treasuries out and the par value is the fully, you know, functional value, but it gains a little toward that par value. So it increments and etches up. If you look here at the holdings, you know, these things change. They go from 0.9937 to 0.9938. And when you hold these millions of treasuries, then it kicks these up. So that's where that money comes from, right? So no shares. Um, actually, this is off a little. What did we close at? Oh, I didn't finish telling you what we did. Let me go back over. So I told you that we were minus 1.35. So we were at $18.30, right? So one of the things in the holding is it typically tells you, you know, and this number should be 12, it should be 18.30 here. I don't know why this is adding up. Uh, 1422 so I'm using that number and is it getting the share count correctly h8 yes it is I don't know why it's so showing such a low nav expected nav value it's sort of like book value and this is still what it's trading at so sometimes you have that kind of anomaly now what is happening that's a negative for us is this situation, okay? And this is our synthetics, right? 
we're doing great on our weekly calls because the underlying video keeps dropping, right? So we wrote 28 calls, 28 and a half calls, 26 and a half calls. So we've collected, first of all, we're paid those as soon as we write them. They're what in the industry is known as naked calls. You sell them, you don't own the underlying, and you hope that they expire worthless, right? And that's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, it, it's it very improbable that we don't collect all that revenue. We've already collected it. Do we get to keep it? But what happens on our synthetic, let's go take a look at that, right? No new positions. But what happens, these values change. As we push down to 2306, you know, we got a strike at 29. Now, it's out till May 17th. So I'm not that alarmed at this point, right? So these calls that we paid money for when we bought at 29 and 25 and 26 had some value and it was all time premium. Today, even with two weeks, uh, 16, you know, 12 trading days left, there's almost no value in the call. And the put is, needs to be at 29 and that goes to zero, right? And we keep all that premium that we sold them for. Otherwise, we have to buy it back. So what this is telling us is if you had to close it out today, you're going to lose 1.1 million. All right. So let's look at the weeklies. And, and I updated the chart and I want to talk about all this with you. So that paper loss is not what they pay on and it's not a problem until we get closer to 517. So not even going to worry about it other than point it out as a liability. Okay. So we're trading at 1830. Bitto was way down. So when I use my parallel lines for support and resistance on this bull flag, you notice there was a gap here. So we were pretty close to filling that gap already. So we traded down and what did I tell you the low was on Bitto? It looked like 2294, right? Was the inner day low. And we got up to 2415 on the uh, when the Fed started doing its thing and then afterwards we closed at 2306. So what we really want to know is where are we going? Okay, since we tracked Bitcoin, and so I said here, we filled a previous gap at 26 and a tiny gap in the high 23s, right? There's a little gap here, that just barely a gap. And we went below that, so that's considered filled. And now we're sitting down here. So weakness says 22-ish should be massive support. And this line is about where 20, it hits it at about 22. Now, take a percentage. So Bitcoin's trading at 57, and that gave us down to 23. So percentage-wise, if it goes to 52, which is very possible on Bitcoin, and there's major support there, that's our 200-day moving average on Bitcoin. So you got about 10% there, more. So 10%, on 23 could take us down to $20 in theory. I have a feeling, well, is it 23? Yeah, I guess that would be 10%. My gut says I'm bullish, okay? So the buys to me in this environment, if I was looking to add, okay, I would add with a 22, a 21, I'd jump all over it at 20, okay? If you just own some and that's all you have and you own it, you know, higher, or sorry, these are BIDO equivalents, right? You're, you're trading YBIT, so let's then translate that, right? So you're watching a chart of BIDO to then translate in here. So that says to me 16, might come into play with YBIT on a on a 52,000. Sorry guys, when I'm, you know, Bitto's a tracking stock and the one we do the chart on. But if you want to talk on YBIT and you're a, and you're a bull on BTC, 
but I'm trying to be realistic in telling you that while it's trending down and it doesn't quickly recover back to 60, the higher probability is that Bitcoin goes to 52. And if it goes to 52, it's going to drag Bitto down another point, you know, to two and could take this down 10%, which would put it in the mid 16s. Okay, so just be aware of that. We didn't really break out on volume. I mean, one could argue that it's above the trend line, but remember, this is ex-dividend day two. So a lot of people know that they hold it through 430, they're eligible for their dividend and they turn around and sell it. One could say, well, why are they selling it? Because it dropped the dividend amount anyhow, but in this case, it went down more. Uh, what you don't want to see, and it could happen, we could spike up here, have a final drop down in Bitto, right, to, to 22, 21 something, and then turn around and come back in to this. Because I don't really see there's an awful lot of support at 20 here. I just don't see Bitto going below 20 especially with the dividend and things. But again, these are all things for you to think about. All right, there is it. Let's go over and look in the final situation. Uh, I covered all that. Let's look at the weeklies. So we're going to collect all the money in those guys. We've got a 20, you know, 1,050 at 28, 28, 5, 26. You know, we're way out of the money with two days to go. So I don't see a problem with that. What kind of money is it? Well, you can look on your April daily in this fund, because it's so new and the shares are small. It's not a lot of money, but considering the share count, right? It's 86,000, right? And, and collected premiums. And then we had some previously. So let me wrap up by showing you the payment tab. So this is up to date, not a lot changed, right? We stayed the same amount of shares. So if it were to pay out right now, you know, with six or seven trading days in it, 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 it would pay this 46 and probably another 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 cents of this um, synthetic. Although it has that liability, but what's it booked? So when this thing gets to six weeks, if we recover on that synthetic and we continue to do these short calls, you know, this thing could be a $2 payer, right? So when you have the opportunity to buy this thing, maybe at 16, you need to think if you're bullish. Again, don't buy this if you're not bullish on the underlying, right? If you think Bitcoin is just worthless and not gonna do well, don't try and chase a yield here, right? All right, so that's what I had for you guys today. Um, I appreciate my new subscribers. Uh, put in the comments anything you need to know, anything additional you want me to, to cover on this. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is for fun and education. Okay, see you guys. Bye.